Hello, this is Miles bringing you a fleet operations replay. Today we've got a 1v1 between Viking and Locked. That's what I'm going to call them. Both of them have difficult to pronounce names, so I'm going to call one of them Viking and the other one Locked. So, the map today is, as nearly always, Dual 2 version 1.2. Well, until Boggs releases version 1.3, then that will become the normal one. Up the top, we have Locked as the Red Federation. <clears throat> he is apparently either going to go for double resources or double sabers. Double resources. It's an okay build, gets the resources in quickly. And his opponent, I saw before the match, was also fed. And this is Viking. So, both of these players have had a few games online. Viking's had a replay previously, so this should be good. Vikings doing the most common federation build, resources and engineering at the same time, yard and mining second, then it span, probably put up a second yard, maybe go for warpins, we'll see. Both scouts are doing their thing. They chose their race before game, so they both knew they were going to face federation opponents. Viking going for the tr dilithium first, so is locked. We now see Starfleet engineering. This should should probably be the Antares yard. Yep. So yeah, locked doesn't want to dilly dally on getting his money. He wants his papers now. So yeah, there's, there's not really much to comment on at the moment. Both scouts taking a little bit of starbase fire. But with 180 speed, I don't think there is any realistic chance of losing a scout this early in the game. Chassis level 1 is about to finish. Just when the, the shipyard finishes, we'll see what he queues up. I'd bet... I'd go mix of monsoons and intrepids until it becomes clear what he needs to counter. Nope, straight monsoons. Absolutely no no second thoughts in his mind. He wants the monsoons and he wants ten of them out of this yard. Here goes Starfleet Science. Presumably this will allow him to get proximity torpedo, which is pretty much the best offensive weapon of um this it's the reason you build the monsoon really. Well, that's not true. It works good against long-range ships, but without proximity torpedo, monsoon spam probably wouldn't be a viable strategy because the monsoon's phases, they're short-ranged, they're not exactly fantastic damage. You want proximity torpedo. It works great versus pretty much everything. It does a good amount of damage, stacks well. You get loads of them, you can one-shot many enemies. And his opponent, no ships at the moment. Chassis level 1 hasn't finished, that's why. When chassis level 1 finishes, we'll see what this guy goes for. Intrepids versus Monsoons. I'd give it to the Monsoons. Monsoons are slightly cheaper, slightly faster, and never miss. The Intrepids will miss 40% of the time with their torpedoes. And the Monsoons have the better special. The Tricobolt Torpedo, it's an okay special for finishing off, but it's just not as good as the Monsoon for finishing retreating enemies off. And it's Intrepids. So we're going to see an interesting matchup today. Straight Intrepids versus Straight Monsoons. Although this one could very well be a warp-in. And here we go, down the bottom, putting up a turret. That's a common Federation strategy as well. Put up a turret whenever you expand. Gives a little bit of defence. He's scouting up here to see where his opponent's expanding. His opponent is down here, going oddly for the Tritanium first. Maybe he wants to make sure he's got enough money to build Starfleet Command in a few minutes. It does cost 400 Tritanium. <clears throat> and the first Monsoon on the board is running this venture away. Has he got Proximity Torpedo? Not yet. He has got loads of money. He could easily afford Proximity Torpedo. And there we go, Starfleet Command. The re because the Monsoon is slightly cheaper than the Intrepid it's possible to make monsoons continuously while also going for Starfleet Command. 
his opponent who is going for Intrepids, he might just not have enough money. There we go, 213. Yeah, he's, he hasn't got enough money for both Intrepids and Warpins and an expansion all at the same time, and Miners. So he's got one, two, three Miners at his expansion. He looks like he's going to split them roughly evenly between the two resources. His opponent has just finished this platform. Is he going to upgrade it or not? Two monsoons out versus one intrepid. And a scout being rather rather frisky going after a miner. It's got, already got 7% of its shields. Give it another couple minutes, it might get the kill. So these two monsoons are going after this fledgling expansion. Where'd that Intrepid go? The Intrepid's back at the main base. A second Intrepid on the way. Doesn't appear to be a decisive advantage for either player. He does have just under what he needs for Starfleet Command. Locked is expressing dismay at this harassment, but I don't think he should be too scared. Without proximity torpedo, two monsoons isn't exactly a threat. But there's proximity torpedo coming. And you, you have a sneaky feeling the second it completes, he's going to fire it. He's got the proximity to open. There, we, no, that was the Trico Bolt. Well, he's got Trico Bolt early, but it missed. That's an unfortunate side effect of Trico Bolt. It misses the same amount as normal torpedoes. And the two monsoons have discharged their special at this Intrepid. And barely scratched the shifts. Well, I say barely scratched back, 30%. Oh, and that, that one, that time it hits. Here comes a warp in. That is going to be for Viking. He's just done the warp in. He's sending it in. Unlucky draw, I'm going to say. It's just. It's all torpedoes. And the Intrepid. Well, the Intrepid is medium range, so these torpedoes aren't going to do terrible. So Viking gets his monsoon away with most hull. This Intrepid's getting a little bit hammered. It needs to go now. These Intrep these Excelsiors are going to fire their torpedoes, and they've got it. That, that is a big one. That Intrepid, that was a big kill for Viking. So yeah, the, the Intrepid may look small, but with its medium size, all these torpedoes are going to be hurting it. Nebula class refit, it absolutely spams torpedoes like mad. Excelsiors, every 40 energy I believe it is, is another photon torpedo. Whatever the exact value is, it's a lot of photon torpedoes that will start a battle from an Excelsior 1. It's, it's incredible versus the Borg, but Warpins in general are good versus Borg with their heavy torpedoes. The Nebula refit, burst fire torpedoes. So yeah, their forces expansion away. And Locked has decommed his mining expansion and another miner goes down so I said that two monsoons without proximity torpedo weren't much of a threat they actually got a, um, a miner without using their special and here's the defensive warp in practically the same warp in except for the fact that the nebula isn't a refit it's an old-fashioned sensor nebula he's probably gonna feel a bit shortchanged by that warp in because two XLs they're the weakest they've only got only got 23 defense that's, that's a lot more than I thought they had but they are slow and when they die they give away a lot of supply and those monsoons went back repaired and have come back out to fight some more gonna force another decom down here he's put up a pulse platform good choice the intrepids are the main threat to platforms but they're short range so they will do worse versus the ablative armor equipped post platform and this mining station probably going to decom and there we go gets back a portion of the resources that went into it so we're looking at six ships for locked six ships seven ships for viking that intrepid that was lost is a big thing it's gonna it's probably gonna 
um, show us what the rest of the match is going to be like. Viking uh, Locked is still going heavy on the Intrepids. He has got a good amount of resources though. There's enough there for him to go out to the right if he can. Which he probably can't at the moment because of this scout. And put up an Erodi Yard. But it wouldn't really help him. The only thing he could build would be XL2s which are incredibly terrible against Monsoons. And here we have he has no Nova class, no Norway class. So he has the Riesner avatar and let's check his opponent Viking. Viking has those two ships so he is Mason. Riesner does have good Avalons available to her. They would help here against the Monsoon. No they wouldn't. They're long range. Nope. Yeah the Monsoons have pretty much got this here. Five of them up here. The Warpins over there. His Warpins will be ready in a second. Has he noticed? Yep. Very, very, very good there. Knows exactly when his warp-ins were ready. He's bringing them in for the support. And he's got the same warp-in for the second time. He's got the exact same warp-in. Which is like a copy and paste of the previous one. Two Excelsiors and a Torpedo Neb. These Torp Nebs, if they build up, they are going to be very useful later in the game. So the defence forces of a Warpian and four Intrepids have repelled the raiding party of Monsoons. This scout is just, just out of position. The last torpedo hit it, it's gone. Just a bit careless. It got left near a battle and of course any ship left near a battle will get all happy, run into battle no matter how weak it's pop gun and probably die. You have to put them on green alert, green autonomy and tell them to sit still or they will just run everywhere and here we go this is this is interesting Viking has split his fleet up and I'm not sure this is such a great move he's harassed with warpins these are all warpins and the excelsiors are all slow and they're going up against intrepids which are all fast enough to keep up and another intrepid bites the dust if he chased after him with his intrepids and tried to get some of these excelsiors kill the Excelsiors, it will cost him some war um, supplies. And here is a demonstration of the power of the Monsoon. Even in the late game, even when the Monsoons are getting a bit too weak to be in fleet battles, which isn't often, I've got to admit, even in, even in mid to late game the Monsoons can hold their own in a spam fleet. But when the Monsoons are looking a bit old, maybe really late game when the battleship's coming out, send five of them around to harass. Use their proximity torpedoes. You're probably going to get some kills. They're fast. They don't miss the miners. And another scout of locked is gone. I'd have beamed to it and stolen it. And here we have Viking doing the same strategy he just done again. He sends the monsoons into the tritanium. And sends the warpins into the dilithium. And every time he gets a miner. I'm going to say this game's over now. Viking has been very good at bottling his opponent up and harassing him very heavily. He hasn't been harassed himself. All of his mining's intact. And he's expanded a second time over here. Got the miners up. Only one miner so far on a platform. I've got to say, this game is probably over. He is strangling the resources out of Locked. And he is quite literally locked on most resources. Or not. No, he's, he's got plenty of money in the bank. He did build a monsoon of his own, and he's built another monsoon, and he's got one on the field. Obviously he feels the monsoon is a helpful ship today. He hasn't got proximity torpedo. I'd recommend getting it. He's rolling in tritanium. When you've got tritanium, never hurts to do a bit of research. And he brought his warp in, and I forgot to mention this, and that's a very good warp in. He's got an ambassador good versus long range should help against these XL ones where are they his opponent has a bunch of XL ones here they are he's got four of them take half damage from them and he got himself a torp neb can never have too many torp nebs especially in this game both players have a special researched out of the there's two specials the proximity torpedo and 
um, Triker Bolt for the Intrepid, and both players have one of those um, researched. So the Torque Nebs can turn on their um, special launch or refit thing and can fire any of those that have been researched. Which is handy. In this case, Viking has the slightly better special. He has proximity torpedo. If monsoons with proximity torpedo weren't enough, he'd then have torpedo nebulas firing two of them firing proximity torpedo as well. He doesn't have any intrepids on the board, so it's unlikely he's got um Trika bolt researched. But yeah, the, the nebula can fire these specials with a great frequency because their energy regens faster when the sp special is activated. And he's got his dilithium mining up to two miners. He is now going for an Erodi Yard. We saw here Locked earlier going for an Erodi Yard, but he never built it. He probably deconned it. And this Excelsior is just a bit too slow, but Locked was feeling generous and let it survive. It's very difficult to keep Excelsior alive. And here's a warp in. This should be. No, it's not, it's Vikings. And that's a very nice warp in. A galaxy. They're very powerful ships. An ambassador. My favourite warp in. Incredibly fast, incredibly tough, with a special that makes it even tougher. You're not going to kill them. And an Excelsior. All of, all of these warp ins do cost a fair amount of supply. And there we go. The Intrepid is a naturally fast ship. It's naturally easy to escape and repair with them. But in this case, this Fed fleet has just so much DPS that it's going to kill them before they can get away to repair. And I would... I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this is a base killing fleet. I'd say that this is about just the minimum what you'd need to kill a base. I say that because it's got the XLs with good torpedoes, Torp Nebs with good torpedoes, the monsoons, which are very useful at tanking fire. Look at this starbase shooting a monsoon. It's long range, the starbase is, so the monsoon is going to take half damage. You put a few monsoons in there, they're going to take greatly reduced damage from the starbase, while your XLs hang out at the back and fire in their torpedoes. The nebula class refits, they can turn on their special and use precise volley to drain the shields of the starbase in large chunks. And Lox has just given up on saving these miners. I don't blame him, this fleet is a fed roll. Let's check out the icons on this monsoon that's reached single gold bar. Sixth gen shield generators. Resistance against pulse and beams. Which is the starbase. And in comes an is that a warp in from Yep, that's Locke's warp in. Not terribly good, he's got another two XL ones. XL ones are the order of the day today. And now his decoming is everything. Probably wants some money to upgrade his starbase for one last hurrah. But at least he got another Torp Neb. He's now got two of them. His opponent should have two of them as well. Two Torp Nebs, yep. And he's done. A v he's doing very good with his fleets today. He's split all the fast ones over here and all the slow ones over here. And the Ambassador, of course, is very fast. And he's got his Intrepids now. No special yet. I think he's preparing for the base assault. Intrepids, they're good at base killing. They're fast enough to escape any starbase fire. And they can be refitted. Yep, they can not be refitted. They can use Trikobot Torpedo, which does triple damage to the starbase and all buildings. And of course XL2s, which spam quantum torpedoes like crazy. <clears throat> and these monsoons are just going to kill the last miners this is the end of the game I believe he's probably just gonna come in and when he's got the fleet just wipe this starbase away so yeah even the feds can be fed rolled and the miners are going out to meet the fleet at least they have the advantage of draining all the torpedoes of the Excelsiors before the main battle You can't tell the XL not to fire its weaponry refit torpedo. It will fire them whether you like it or not. So it just wasted a whole bunch of energy on those uh, miners. And yep, 
all that decon money he's put into the star base, refitted it up to maximum. 410 defense. That makes a cube look weak. Cube has somewhere in the range of 200 defense, I believe. So when it comes time to destroy this star base, they've still got a fair amount of work to do. Although the Fed Fleet has destroyed the constructors, so. No, they haven't destroyed the constructors. Locked has two constructors in the middle of the map. This starbase is giving a lot of fire out, killing plenty of ships. Oh, and this monsoon just got out of range but lost engines, so it's going to stay here. This nebula hasn't used its specials. Don't know why. None of the nebulas have been using their specials today. It's such a useful special, it only costs a small amount of supply to get access to really useful special weapons on a ship that normally wouldn't have them. And as we've seen today, proximity torpedoes worth it. And this starbase is giving out a lot of firepower. And an officer ranked XL1. Doesn't really get anything. Just more stats, I guess. Its stats are oh, much nicer now. Monsoon gets good defense boosts. So yeah, it's going to take a while to destroy this starbase. But the warp in he brings in has delivered to him, I believe, another torp neb and a, and a steam runner, which needs to use Triloader now. The USS Boussard. Could do it could use triloader now. This monsoon's out here. It's gonna be out for quite a while repairing its engines. And Viking just doesn't stop. He's brought in a constructor to the middle to expand, but he's already won the game. His ships have repaired and come back, and they're gonna be going out again. Even this late in the game, he's being very good with his um, babying of his ships. The steam runners used its the triloader. And this starbase will die soon. And there we go. And that's the game. Let's check out the resources thousands upon thousands of resources he just can't build fast enough and he's building from only two yards but with like three moon pairs understandable he'd be rolling in the money and there we go one of the players has quit so I guess that'll be all of that that'll be all for today see you next time